Television Commission to order. Please have roll call. Cox. Present. Cora. Here. Natale. Dickinson. Yee. Here. Waters. Yep. Colin. Pinnell. Here. Shelby. We have a quorum. Thank you. This meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel, on the cable, cable cast cable system. Today's meeting is being cable cast live and will be repeated Saturday, November 6th at noon on Channel 14. A VHS copy is also available for check, checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should fill out a speaker identification form in the back, back table to give, and give it to the secretary. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Uh, can we have item one, please? Mr. Chairman, yeah. today's meeting is essentially an opportunity for your grantees and franchisee to report to you. So your item one is grantee status reports. Okay. Um, we start with um, Ruth Blank, right? Uh, item one, sir, is the grantee status reports. Recall that you had a request from Access Sacramento for 10 minutes and the other grantees Ron? as well. We have an arrangement for Gene Wilcox. Oh, okay, CCC's Gene Wilcox be will be first. the first one in. And after Jeannie Wilcox, it will be um, Kurt M. Was kind of Kurt Wicking. Wickinger. Okay. Uh, would you let the record show that Mr. Natoli is now here? You must have heard me call him. It's on the record. Yes. I'm going to ding him for being late. <laughs> All right, let's get her. I didn't really get, that's the presentation be following me. <laughs> I, I'll be really good. My name is Jean Wilcox. I'm the program coordinator for Sacramento Educational Cable Consortium. And you will find in front of you our annual report. I would like to point out to you that it has been another successful year. Uh, we would like you to look at the report at your leisure, but I would like to point out again that uh, with the distance education in this area, we have uh, had over 6,000 students enrolling in classes. This is uh, high school through graduate school. Very proud of those students. This semester, there are 130 hours of live classes a week. Every now and then, I get uh, a telephone call, someone answering a question that a professor has asked. And uh, I tell them that in the packet they receive, there is the correct phone number to call. I have people who call and say, I'm not enrolled. Can I watch? Yes, you may. We hope that it, that it will extend your learning quite a bit. Um, we would like to. Uh, say again that we are programming our two channels seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We are very fortunate to have a nice working relationship with Access Sacramento. You know, there are some hours of the morning that are so popular for classes, and they've been very gracious in extending some time to us for those classes to be shown. The annual audit has already been submitted to you, and uh, in that audit, the CPA said he had no suggestions, and so we told ourselves, good, we've been doing everything right, and we really have been trying to do um, right. We are very grateful to the Cable Commission for our two channels. We are very grateful for the financial assistance, and of course, we would not be successful if we did not have that. Uh, the annual audit says that it is that we are sound and we've done a good job in outside funding in addition to the funds that we receive from you folks. I would like to point out too that we are on the web. We've given you the address again and anything new is coming up. We have new classes scheduled for the spring. What I want to point out to you today is the invitation to our Media Fest. At this point, we have uh, over 150 teachers who have responded to our office saying that they are going to be attending. We anticipate that there will be 250 to 300 teachers. This event grows. It is a cooperative effort with Comcast. And uh, this year, 14 network programmers are going to be here to make presentations to uh, teachers, giving them materials that can be used in the classroom. 
Sometimes we overlook the resource that the cable gives us as far as bringing information to our students. And when the teachers have the right tools in their hands, they can make it a very effective teaching tool. Our children nowadays seem to want to see as well as do. And uh, so cable offers us that uh, opportunity. One spe special session that we have is a session that we're conducting with the PTA and the National Cable Television Association. This has been a very nice cooperative effort with the National PTA. We're very pleased to offer a workshop in critical viewing skills and media literacy at this event. And uh, we would encourage you to drop by if you can. If you have a special teacher that you'd like to have this resource, be sure and encourage them to attend. The final part of the SEC presentation this afternoon is going to be brought to you by Kirk Wicking. I believe you have his, uh, mm -hmm. you have talked of him. He is the Dean of Learning Resources at Sacramento City College, a very good partner with SECC. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as, uh, for the record, my name is Kirk Wicking. I'm the Dean of uh, Learning Resources at Sacramento City College. And I'm also representing the Los Rios District as the SECC Vice Chair this year. I just want to make a quick comment to, to let some of you folks know who don't remember me that uh, I've been with SECC from the very beginning when it had 3,000 uh, subscribers and when we only had three programs we were running on the air quite some time ago. In the 11 years since that, we have offered well in excess of almost 300 courses and we've had over 14,000 students go through our courses by television. Uh, we, as a district, invest uh, in excess of $100,000 a year and have for the last 10 years in this operation. And we also do extensive research on our students so that we can tell you all about them. Uh, for example, we can tell you that 62% of them are taking our courses because they're too busy working. They don't go anywhere. Uh, we can give you profiles on the type of students we have. And for Comcast, they'd probably be interested to know that uh, approximately 85% of our students use uh, cable television for the delivery of their courses. I also want to add that we have uh, CRC, uh, who also provides programming uh, through the uh, cable system. And in over six years, they've had approximately 160 plus classes and over 7,000 students. They're currently offering 19 classes and they have an enrollment of about 1,100 students for this fall. Uh, some of you may have read uh, in the B this week, there was an article on our new uh, chancellor of the Los Rios Community College District, uh, Dr. Bryce Harris, and you may have seen that uh, he mentioned the fact that we're going to get more involved in distance education, so we, we're very grateful for the opportunities we've had to work with SECC. Uh, finally, I'd just like to make one comment that um, as the Dean of Learning Resources at Sacramento City College, we're in the process of uh, completing a, approximately a $12 million, million state-of-the-art library with a professional television studio and um, a couple electronic classrooms. And we currently provide uh, origination to uh, the cable head end through our microwave and um, through our super trunks, if you will. So we've been in this a long time. And um, I'll close with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ron Cooper? Ron Cooper, Executive Director of Access Sacramento. I'll keep my comments brief, and we've armed you with tomatoes so that you can ensure that that is, in fact, what happens. Were these to throw? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's tempting, Sam, but uh, <laughs> hang on. They, they look big, Ron. I mean, those, those are too good to throw, <laughs> Sam. You don't want to throw those. Um, and West Oak of our staff will be up shortly to explain the tomatoes and demonstrate a variety of websites um, consistent with the presentation that your executive director, uh, Richard Spasto, made at last month's meeting, that indeed there are organizations in the community, Access Sacramento being one of many, that are very active in not only the traditional services that we've been um, a steward, providing stewardship on your behalf for the last 11 years, video and audio production services, but also in new media as well. And uh, so, before Wes comes up, just a couple of other announcements. The game of the week is going quite successfully. If you haven't tuned in Sunday nights at 8 p.m. on Channel 73, I encourage you to do so. Last week's game was great. It was out at Grant, Del Campo, 
uh, exciting, uh, named the game of the week by the bee, uh, and it was great to see a bright sunny day, uh, 6,000 folks having a wonderful time, thanks to the Educational Cable Consortium, two short pieces that we run at halftime, profiles of Del Campo High and Grant High, um, a wonderful vehicle for showing the excellence and the wonderful students and parents and teachers involved in our schools and in our athletic programs. We hope to see the Game of the Week continue. Um, also left a press release up there. We're very proud that, in fact, our community radio station, KCBL, is now also on our website from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. So what that means is local community radio is now international. It can be heard anywhere in the world that has an internet connection. And to fill in more details about that, I'd like to introduce for a demonstration of those services, West Oak of our staff. Uh, Wes, uh, there's a bio at the end of the uh, tomato handout. Uh, please read it because we're very lucky to have him as a part of our staff and as a part of the, the team that uh, is uh, bringing new technologies to our community. Wes? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Cable Commission. For the record, my name is Wes Delk, and I'm really pleased at this point in my life to be working with Ron and the Access Sacramento Board and the staff over there, and particularly the thousands of your constituents and my fellow citizens who use the facilities and services that access throughout the year. My, uh, as Ron mentioned, in the back there, there's a little bit of a bio if you want to check whether I know anything about it, but I'm even more interested that you take a quick look at some point when you have time at page two, which shows the depth and the scope of the community uh, participation in the uh, Sacramento Community Network. Like I say, the primary purpose here is to introduce you to a few sites that are put together. These sites are linked together in many different ways to provide uh, uh, a lot of internet access for our community. So, assuming a modem and the computer will all work together, the first site I want to show you is the sacramento.org site, which is Access's own site. This is where we're able to, let me see if I can see the corner down here, yeah. This is where we're able to tout, every mouse, as you know, is a little bit different in sensitivity here, but we'll get it in a flash. There, that's what I want. This is where we're able to show, I'm not doing quite as well as I like, there we go. This is where we're able to talk about our uh, cable television channels, our radio channels. This is where people are able to link into Real Audio and hear KCBL. Uh, Sacramentans that are away for college and the military traveling around the world can get a little taste of Sacramento. A wide variety of programs are run during those times, so check it out on different dates. Uh, we talk about to other sites similar to ours, and basically this is where we brag about the work we do with the money that you provide us each year and the other money we're able to raise. Uh, quite a few people on the lower left-hand side also uh, we're proud of here that help us underwrite this. I want to mention that all the things that we do in the media lab, with the exception of putting up our cable channel and our radio channel, uh, none of those are paid for by the uh, funding we receive from the Cable Commission. So this is our page, sacramento.org, where you find out about access per se. But along with literally hundreds of other organizations throughout the community, including education, private industry, uh, nonprofits, et cetera, we are the front door to the Sacramento area. Along the left-hand column here, you'll see all kinds of channels, sort of the nickname for this kind of a uh, issue. You can look at uh, computer organizations, business in our community, neighborhoods, local media, check on libraries, look on organizations. In fact, for instance, if we click on organizations, up will come a uh, wide variety of organizations. We get probably an average of 10 links every day. There are thousands of Sacramento organizations from uh, frivolous to just plain fun to very serious organizations uh, that are in this area. I might also mention that with a number of grants, including a very nice one from Pac Bell, we also are the leading bilingual website producer in this community. Many, many Spanish and English, and soon Chinese and English, and some other Southeast Asian languages will be available throughout this site. So we have everybody from uh, uh, Raiders Fan Club, which we haven't heard from in a little while, but uh, <laughs> they're not doing too well, but uh, to uh, you name it, are on this site. I also want to point out a couple of other sites, too. One that we're really pleased with, let's see, uh, come up with here quickly. 
sacteens.org. This is a site that we also administer, but again, in all of these cases, there are literally dozens, if not more, groups that are helping to work these together. Sacteens.org is completely done by local teenagers in high schools and uh, some that are not in school any longer. Everything on the calendar here, every review of a local site, no matter what's on here, it's all done by Sacramento Teens, and we're always looking for more uh, supporters to help us with the SAC Teen organization page. There's a calendar here, uh, all kinds of reviews, and currently we're setting up liaisons with all, uh, well, first a handful, and then eventually all the local high schools, so that we'll have regular news from high schools as well as other organizations. Uh, quickly, let's see, we want to see if I can get this page to come up. Sacramento.net is the newest of the sites that are linked. This is going to be the place in the Sacramento area that's the closest to the concept of a community network. Anyone with a non-commercial personal website of any age, as long as they tell us that they want it listed, we don't take pages from third parties. So it's got to be the person who wrote the page or administers the page, whether it's for the official Sacramento homepage or for Sacramento.net. This is where personal homepages will be listed. And everyone in this community who would like to have their homepage listed up there can easily do that uh, by uh, letting us know there's a way for people to put up forms on the net and we can do that. So basically, let me go back to Sacramento.org. Here's the submit a web page. Everyone in our area and elsewhere can submit pages that way. A quick review, the Sacramento.org page is Access Sacramento, our TV guide, a radio guide, our training, a way to link into the web video or web audio. The official Sacramento homepage, the SAC Teens page, the Sacramento.net, which is personal pages. And while I'm not going to show it today, we also do a, I have a national project for the U.S. Department of Commerce. It, technically, the funding ended just recently, but we're going to maintain it anyway, which is a help desk for everyone from the newest newbie to sophisticated people. And that's at sacramento.org slash help desk. Uh, but I want to stop now and see if there are any questions about what we're doing. But our bottom line is we'd like to see the cable commission in particular, but also wearing your other hats and cities and counties support this community effort. It's almost five years old. It's growing rapidly. It's all been done. Uh, without uh, cable commission support and it is really quite the electronic uh, community network i think we have one of the finest in the nation we get calls from all over the united states on how do we do it how do we set up these links together and how do we do it so inexpensively so let me stop there quickly with this uh, quick overview about a minute left to see if there are any questions you have are there any questions by board members if not, check out the sites when you have a chance and have a look at them and send us email if there's any way we can improve. We're constantly upgrading all the sites, the personal sites, the official Sacramento homepage, the help desk, the SAC teens page, and everything else. But we're always looking for good suggestions. Thank you for your time today, and we'll see you on the net. All Thank right. you. Nice job. Okay, uh, next item. Next item is Comcast Communications Status Reports. This is blank. Hello, I'm Ruth Blank with Before Comcast. you even start, I do have a question at the end. I'm going to tell All you right. now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll brace myself. Um, I just wanted to go over a, a few things quickly today. Um, First of all, we have submitted our uh, rate filing with your executive director, and I just wanted to quickly run through what the rates are. Is, is this where I put the, the thing for? Yeah. Right there. Over here. Yeah. Second piece. Well, I'm kind of glad you brought that up, because that's the question I had at the end. Okay. Well, <laughs> Maybe you won't have a question. I may not have a question, because I was going to bring up the rates. The... Um, the rate filing that we've submitted is for the rates that you regulate and hmm. Is that in the right place? Yeah, don't. You're fine with this. Okay. Well, they got to switch over. They got to They got to Okay, there it is. Um, the economy basic level of service uh, will go down by 16 cents in February. Um, the equipment charges, remote controls will go up by five cents, 
The Gerald converters will go down by 31 cents and Scientific Atlanta converters will go up by 4 cents. And these are obviously all formula driven rates. And my understanding is that Rich is having these rates reviewed and um, this is what we plan to proceed with. Right. We've just, for your information, we received this filing uh, this week. We sent it off to our consultant. I've looked at it, as Ruth just mentioned. These are pretty straightforward. Now, it's, it's a 30-page filing, but it comes out of a master spreadsheet that the FCC puts out. So if the numbers going in are right, the numbers coming out are pretty good. I don't expect any changes. Pretty much the same. Uh, we'll get back from our consultant, who our financial guy, who does just these. It'll, it'll take him a few days. He didn't get it until yesterday. Okay. But I'd be surprised if we have any serious problems. Any questions by board members at this point? Is there a rate uh, schedule for the next level? No. That that uh, we submit. Actually, the requirement is that we submit it 30 days prior to a rate change right. and we'll actually be doing it before that because it, we need to get our notifications out earlier. So we have not submitted that yet. Well, Ruth, is, isn't, isn't there, uh, let me ask a question. Uh, I understand, I don't, maybe you can explain this to mm -hmm. us, but I understand that we have now taken some of the prime channels out of some of the tiers. Well, or we, that will happen January 1. Well, doing? actually December 1, um, we'll be moving three channels onto a migrated product here. This is what the social part of what the social contract uh, accomplished. And they'll be moving uh, w TBS, no, it's no longer WTBS, TBS, TNT, Discovery Channel will move to this migrated product here um, December 1st. There's no change in anybody's bill as a result of this change on December 1st because the, the cost of the tier is $1.35 and the rest of the bill is being reduced by $1.35. So it's net net the same um, when the change occurs. The change, the only change um, that's significant would be for economy basic customers who had TBS will now be replacing that with C-SPAN 2. They'll still be able to get TBS by subscribing to the tier and in fact we've had a very, very positive response so far from those customers who said this is you know, this is the kind of thing I've been wanting for a long time because for $1.35 they can add to their bill, which is now $11.81, and get three of the best cable channels. So, um, so far the response, it was, we've had some confusion, admittedly, because the newspaper and some of the media, you know, made it a little bit more confusing than it needed to be. But um, uh, the response from customers has, for the most part, been very positive. So in retrospect, you're saying it's not a net increase? Not, no. It's the, when we make this change on December 1st, it's net net the same. The, the tier becomes unregulated in 98. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 okay. Well, the question. Go ahead, Rod. My understanding was that that uh, TNT, TBS, and Discovery were in the currently in the economy basic package. Only TBS was in the economy. Only basic. TBS was in the yeah. economy mm -hmm. basic. So, yeah. uh, when you make this uh, transition, then uh, a subscriber who currently has economy basic and wants to keep TBS gets to do so for the privilege of paying an extra dollar thirty-five a month. Is that that's the that's the the increase that that person might perceive to have occurred. Right, but I'll tell you something. TBS was going to change levels no matter what because they're changing the way they market to us. They're no longer, we, we had them on the economy basic tier because they were in the same category as a broadcast channel. They're a broadcast channel out of Atlanta. They're now moving um, away from that and they're becoming what they're calling a free market superstation. So they're changing the way they market to us. We would have moved them anyway, um, starting well a month later in January. Okay. So this way, and and if we had moved them to the expanded basic um, lineup, subscribers would have had to pay about uh, fourteen dollars more and, or twelve dollars more to get to get them. This way, they can get it back for uh, just a. a you know, a small fee. Even, even assuming their change in, in their own marketing approach, would that have uh, legally, or contractually, or otherwise have obligated Comcast to, to change the 
placing of, of uh, TBS in terms of its own uh, array of, of stations? Are you asking, that, is the way TBS marketing to us requiring a change? Yeah. Um, in effect, yes. I mean, their rate is going way up as a result of this change. You mean they're, they're charging yeah, the uh, providers more? Yes. I see. Considerably more. I see. Yeah. So, so you're looking to recover those costs by changing their tier? Well, we're looking to recover those costs, and um, it's also... Uh, it, the economy level of service is really intended to be a broadcast and an access service, and we've always provided more channels than we've been, you know, absolutely required to. But once a channel is no longer a broadcast service, it really doesn't belong on that tier. It's a good opportunity to put C-SPAN 2, which is a, you know, clearly a public service kind of channel on that tier. But, but that placement isn't a, isn't a function of, of any contractual or legal requirement, no. correct? That, that's, a, that's a function of how people in the business view groupings of different offerings. Is, yes. is that, is that mm -hmm. fair? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay. I mean, you could put, uh, you could put all kinds of stations in your economy basic or all kinds of, of offerings in your economy basic if you wanted to. Sure, you might, the economy you might take, basic would end up being pretty expensive. You might take so. a, well, you might take a law <coughs> if you tried to keep the prices the same, yeah. but there's nothing legally that prevents you from doing that. No. Yeah, okay. All, well, con yes, contractually there are, uh, if in some cases we're required to put a channel on the same uh, level of service where other similar channels are, so we'd end up having to put everything there and, and we'd have no economy basically. I see. But that's, that's not the case with TBS though at this, uh, when they make this switch? No. Okay. Mr. Spostow has a comment there, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah. let Ruth clear and then I'll, I want to round out a couple of things from our perspective. Are there any other questions at this point? Okay. I have a, one, a couple other things to go through. One, one is that you, um, we're, uh, I don't know if any of you are DMX customers, but uh, if you are, you know that we're changing out DMX boxes, and the reason is that um, we're putting them uh, into digital bandwidth so that we can free up two um, analog channels to add a couple of channels. Um, we will be adding new product, and, um, and by, by moving DMX into digital space, it enables us to add 10 new DMX channels. So for anybody who, who likes having uninterrupted uh, digital quality music, we're adding opera and Motor City Sound and piano and 80s hits and 70s hits. So the DMX service is really I improving by quite a bit. And it gives us the opportunity to add new channels, which we'll be doing um, in the coming months. And we're pretty excited about that. And I also just wanted to let you know um, that Comcast continues to make investments in customer service and we're expanding our call center by about 4,000 square feet to accommodate um, a, a large expansion in our customer service staff and um, that's going to be happening really over the next couple of months and also um, we have expanded our uh, our hours that we um, handle all kinds of calls. Right now we're open at seven in the, from 7 to 8 in the morning for service calls only and from 8 to 9 at night for service calls only. Those hours will now take any kind of calls at all, service, billing, sales, whatever anybody wants. Um, and same things for Sunday. Sundays used to be just uh, service staff and now we're open for everything. So we should be able to handle the call volume um, better and better all the time. Any questions? Yeah. Nope. This side? You're going? Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. Mr. Chairman, on the side note, I can make a couple of comments. Uh, first off, on Ruth's point about customer service, yes, the trend line, trend line is improving. It has been for many, many months now. And our, <coughs> our, our problems on customer service side are way, way down. Let's talk about rates. The social contract, and Ruth's statement was correct, but I want to be sure you caught it, is that the Movement of the three channels occurs on December 1st. That's been properly noticed. Happened to get some press in the, in the B and in the, in the electronic media as well. On December 1st, there's no net change. But the social contract provides that in January, that piece of those channels that were moved over, free fall. Those rates can be whatever the company sets. So we don't know what those are yet. 
The falling roof, roof will miss us. Do, do we anticipate a, a, a rise, a raise roof? Well, we're, we're actually... I, that's, the, that's the question. I mean, I, I think... I mean, that's the question. I think that's what, one of the questions I'm asking. Do we, antici is, 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 do we anticipate an increase when, when in fact, that, that happens because of the social contract? And if we do, what kind of increase do we anticipate for the public? We're, we're still examining um, the rates in, in our unregulated services for 98. I, I don't have an answer for you now. Um, we're looking at the, the product, and, you know, we really we have to be very mindful of, of, uh, of our market. We have competition. Um, they're very sensitive to what we do, and so we have to be uh, sensitive to um, our consumers. Well, I think that's why we have a free market. I can tell you right now, you got all these other folks saying they're cheaper than Comcast. So, that's right. And you can get more get more bang for your dollar by yeah. taking something other than cable. Right. And, and I think I think how you keep customers really is the quality of service and the upgrades that Comcast keep trying to put into the community. And I hope they stay vigilantly on that on that move. I think that's something I know this board, at least me, I'm truly concerned about that. Well, we're very concerned about it too, and, and I, we're paying I hope attention. So. Let's, let's walk through. I asked Ruth this, this question this morning, and, and we've had plenty of time to talk about it. The company hasn't made its decision on the next rate adjustment, other than what they filed with us, that's the 16 cent reduction on economy basic. To make changes effective February 1st, they will have to work with staff and begin notifying subscribers on January 1st. That means if there is any changes, and I'll bet you lunch they are, there will be and they will be upward, they're going to hit Christmas week. So I want you to know that now. I will um, will offer that if Comcast... Oh, is, that the, is that the Christmas present to the public? Uh, we've been here before. <laughs> the way the cycle is, every February, the annual adjustments on CPI, which was the filing that was just made, take effect. Again, your authority is to only regulate the economy basic tier. The FCC regulates the next level up. Those filings are due and must be posted to subscribers 30 days in advance, a February 1st implementation date. There will be an adjustment, I believe, to the regular full basic service and to the new flex pack that was moved over. I believe it will be upward if you follow the industry trends. Um, we've been here before, and, and I think Yogi Berra said, you know, it's deja vu all, all over again. But in the last four years now, three years, the tracking is that cable rate increases overall are running about 3x inflation. We had this discussion in 1990 and 91. There's now a new bill in Congress introduced by a House member to put a moratorium on cable rate increases. In a, in a regulated environment, rates are going up as, as fast, as quickly as they did in an unregulated environment. That's the bottom line. So I, I offer to prepare you that you will have no authority over what I expect to be an increase in the basic service rate that the company will file sometime in the last two weeks in, de in December if they follow industry trends. I'll add one more piece. A year ago now, when the cable company filed its rate filing on the second level tier, recall that they, they left a little over a dollar of headroom, of top room, between the permitted rate according to the calculations and the actual rate that they implemented. Remember, Wayne stood here and said, I made a market, we made a market decision, and we're not going to take the full dollar five extra. The company, that is a permitted rate, and those numbers have now rolled forward another year with pass-throughs of programming costs and pass-throughs of inflation. Theoretically, the, the full basic tier increase could be significant. We don't know yet how the company will analyze that and view it in the marketplace. But they have a dollar per month already from last year that could carry forward, as well as whatever the calculations are this year, which we haven't done at this, Mr. At Chairman, this time. Yes, Mr. And will you you'll put that on the agenda, uh, even though we have uh, we have no uh, no. Uh, Absolutely. The, the issue has become a timing one, which I discussed with the with the chair previously. Your next meeting happens to be on New Year's Day. So it would hit your February agenda on the schedule we would be on now. But uh, February would be too late for us, would it not? Don't, don't we really need uh, a meeting in between? 
And that would I, be at the chair's discretion. Yeah, Mr. Cox, and I, and I uh, uh, told Mr. Spostos that it would be a call meeting if we had to have a meeting, because I think what ends up happening is that probably end up doing a letter if, in fact, we disagree with what's taking place. I don't believe we have control over what happens. We, it's it's kind of, it's really kind of crazy. Well, Mr. Chairman, let, let me just say to you that uh, this is one member of the commission that would prefer that, that you agenda the item. Uh, I, I'm appreciative of the fact that, that uh, we have, uh, uh, we, we don't have the ability to say uh, no or, or yes, and uh, under the circumstances, I've adopted a new uh, policy you, uh, from the standpoint that if I don't have the ability to say no, I don't have the ability to say yes. And so I want to uh, very clearly uh, say that publicly uh, again. So let's put that on the agenda, even if we don't have any authority. Uh, this is one member who wants to be able to vote no if I can't say yes. Okay. And lastly, I want to remind you or bring back to you the issue of the social contract. I gave you a full briefing on this in June. I walked you through the issues. We secured and had council file a 30-page filing with the FCC. The chairman will recall that we sent fairly assertive letters to our congressional delegation, and I coordinated with some dozen, dozen and a half other jurisdictions to support their filing in opposition to the social contract, uh, as, as well as some other issues. I explored with you at the time, haven't changed my recommendation. The only alternative we didn't take was to consider legal action on the social contract. In discussion with council, we recommended then, and I think we still believe that that would be ill-advised. We would, our, pr our prospects there would not be good. Bottom line, this community did everything it could to input and modify the social contract. In reality, the social contract by the FCC was modified almost insignificantly from the draft that you saw in January, and uh, I'm sorry, in June. Well, I, I, guess, I, I guess my question becomes, yes. how, can, how can the board get into a position as elected officials in this community to have a say that makes a difference. Well, that, if, if, in fact, we're just spinning our wheels, I, I, you know, I don't, I, you know, we're just writing our congressional delegation and saying we disapprove and it's still being approved. Unfortunately, we're back to where we were in, in 1990, 1991, where this, the solution is a political one. We went through some fairly aggressive and active efforts at that time on cable television re-regulation. We had some heated discussions in this, in this chamber. The, the, the consumer threshold, and there's three or four consumer groups now supporting this legislation, is, is coming back again because, again, it, there, you know, we've been through this several times. When rate increases get at that 3x inflation level, consumers or constituents start making some noise. We haven't seen in the industry the competition that was promised. Yes, there are satellite um, services available to a certain extent, to a certain type of services. The MMDS or the wireless services have not had the capital to take off and be the significant competitor that we, that we thought. If it's your direction for us to become actively involved in that again, uh, so say you, I will follow through. Um, it's a little early yet in this particular legislation, and the, my read of, of, uh, of Washington is that we haven't gone far enough into the Telecommunications Act for Congress to want to take a, a, a review of this in an active way for a little bit longer. Recall that in 1999, this regulated tier that doesn't seem to be doing too much, the enhanced tier, all regulation on that tier goes away. So we're looking at even some more changes as time goes forward in the next 18 months. What's the pleasure of the board? There is no pleasure. <laughs> well, I mean, well, yeah, I think there is. I think, I think. Oh, I you're think, talking about a meeting. I'm, ta I'm talking about. I understand. Mr. Cox wants, if in fact we don't have a say, I know he wants one of the items agendized for the board. And if there, if in fact it comes before we meet again, I would consider doing a call meeting. I sure. guess is what I'm saying. Is that, is that okay with the rest of the board? Yes. As, yes. as soon as, as soon as yeah, Comcast I'm kind of, files. I'm kind of I mean, you know, I, we can vent, but. As soon as Comcast files. I'll copy the board, I'll copy you, and then you can make a decision. See, I, I, think, I think for me personally, um, I just want to make sure that, that at least Comcast is a good corporate citizen. I think they've tried to be. But Agreed. before that, I, you know, this, this thing get, really gets diluted to me. And I don't think a lot of people really understand what's going on. All of us up here trying to protect the public to make sure they just don't get taken to the ringer. And that's what I really want to make sure that does not happen. So I think the point of it is, yes, we need to watch the legislation. 
Uh, I believe uh, uh, some of our congressional delegation uh, will be here coming home this month. And I think we probably need to sit down with them and have a discussion with Vic, Bob, uh, Doolittle, everybody, and just ask them where they're going with this stuff. So I would, I would uh, try and do that, maybe even try and get them to come to a meeting now. If we have to do a special meeting, and just say, we are real concerned. It's interesting. Yeah, very interesting. But there's some things I'm thinking about that I know we can do, and I don't have a problem in trying to do it. Vote against us if you have So uh, that's pretty much, I think, where we are. Okay. Okay, is there anything else, Ms. Postas? No, sir. Okay, uh, anybody from the public would uh, like have anything like to say before the board? We have no speaker forms. Okay, we are now adjourned. All right. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great.